James, you have the honor of being our first guest at this year's uh, Sun Valley Conference. So take us inside. We've seen the SUVs arriving. Obviously, we've seen the vests. Um, but what are people talking about inside the tent? What are they worried about this year? In some ways, Ed, I find it quite difficult to apply a narrative. There are so many fascinating people and so many different conversations, and I think for each of us, it's biased by our own particular interests. But, you know, I, I think, as you'd expect, there is several comments on politics, um, even including Britain, I would have to say, and about the ramifications for our, our societies. Um, OK, so uh, obviously everyone is looking at this through their own lens. We've talked about this before. I think last year we went into this, the, the sort of the debate between growth investment and value investors. You guys obviously very big growth investors. Um, why does value get so much credit? It, it seems to absorb so much of the attention. Uh, people are constantly sort of fated as being prophetic and mm. having all this wisdom, whereas mm. growth, it's seen more as a moonshot. Why is that? I, I think that's absolutely right, and you know, we don't have all, all the answers to this as on so many topics, but you know, I, I think in, you, you capture it very well. Somehow value investment has been seen to be much more serious, and it has an associated literature and set of gurus to go with it, whereas the only good book written about growth investing uh, common stocks and armed common profits is just as old as I am, which is 60. So it's, it's a long time since there's really been a good articulation of, of growth, I think. Why do you think that is? I mean, the, the, as you say, there is this sort of cult of personality around value, and I think of people like, you know, Buffett and others who have sort of uh, have cherished it over, over, over decades. Um, growth, we just don't see that. And I, I wonder why the two are treated so differently, when actually, if you look at them on a returns basis, growth over the last 10 or 20 years has actually significantly outperformed. I, I think that's absolutely right. And I think, therefore, what we ought to be trying to focus on, trying to think very deeply about, is why that is so. It's, as you imply, made much too long a period to be sheer chance or the actions of, uh, of the Federal Reserve or whatever. And I think it is something to do with increasing returns to scale, which really, ever since Microsoft went public, we ought to have started thinking about that. And I think those areas of increasing return to scale, and particularly to intellectual capital, are getting greater and more dominant in the world. So. I'm, I'm not sure it's going away, and I think the questions you're asking are really important. On the topic of personalities in, in this industry, one we've seen sort of implode fairly spectacularly recently, Neil Woodford, in the UK. Uh, the, the fallout continues, but what damage has that event done to the sort of debate active-passive management? Because it, it does seem to be sort of a significant problem, huge illiquidity now, obviously, in his funds. I, I can understand that it is an issue. And I respect what Neil Woodford was trying to do, even if I think there were limitations in the university he was dealing with um, and the structure in which he's dealing with. But I, I worry much more about the bigger ramifications of this and that there may somehow be a refusal to take risk of any sort. What are those ramifications? Well, you know, for instance, I find it bothersome that the governor of the Bank of England can come out and effectively say it is dangerous to be doing anything which doesn't have immediate li liquidity from this point of view. You know, I, I think there are very few funds which get caught in the trap of what Neil Woodford's seen. Now, that doesn't mean one shouldn't be concerned about them. Do I think they are systemic? No. And I think our bigger problem is whether we have enough people willing to take risk. And this goes back to your previous question, if I, if I may. I think that we've lost track of how investment is principally about providing risk capital, and it is risk capital, for economically and socially improvable tasks. And, you know, I think the rise of this very defensive risk-averse fund management is actually a bigger factor in the comparative stagnations of our economies than tends to be um, conveyed. I hate to do this, but to pick up on, on, on the idea of risk capital and, and, and funding risk. Um, let's talk about Tesla, obviously a company you and I have discussed many times in the sure. past. That for once, you're here, there's no controversy. Everything seems to be going fairly <laughs> smoothly. In fact, most recent news is that they're increasing production. Um, let me ask this. At some point, it seems inevitable that they are going to be re-rated as, as an auto company and not as a tech company as they currently are. If that is the case, and when that does happen, is that a concern for investors like yourselves? Well, firstly, I want to link the very way you're putting the question with what we've been discussing. You know, I find it intriguing. You know, I'm not 
trying in any way to make out that we're equivalent to Buffett or, or whatever else. But, you know, I do find it fascinating that what the media wants to talk to Bailey Gifford about is Tesla and nothing else because it feels that there is a whiff of a problem. You know, it's very rare that we get in the hospital. Or, or, or at least you have, you have an entertaining leader in the form of Elon Musk who <laughs> yes. provides no, I, news. I, 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 I think we would both agree, Ed, though, that there are interesting features of many of the other leaders of our time. Indeed. Which, but, you know, I, I don't want to uh, evade the question. I'm not sure at two levels as to whether it gets re-rated in that. Firstly, I think it is driven by exponential technologies, which are what we look for. Now, you can either say that's about batteries or you can say it is about autonomous and the process of software upgrades and, and the like. On the other hand, you know, I'm not sure there is one car company, and I've always had this trouble 